Hey everyone, thanks for listening. I'm your host Nelson Pizarro and this is Life in a Wine Bottle. For today's episode, we have vineyard management. We have special guest David Drucker. And for me, I will say he's probably the go-to guy for anything you need within the vineyard, as in soil samples, managing the vineyard, if you had any leaf deficiencies, just to name a couple. So if you have a vineyard and all of a sudden your leaves turn yellowish or reddish, or let's just say your vine just dies out of nowhere, well, Mr. Drucker is a man to talk to. He knows everything, and he will point you to the right direction to help you out with your vineyard. Don't forget to subscribe on our YouTube channel or our iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, and like us on follow, follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Life in a Wine Bottle. Let's give a quick shout out to our sponsors, Castelli Family Vineyards, where you can taste the love of the wine. Follow and like them on Instagram at Castelli FE. Bespoke Maestro. They make elegant dresses and suits benefiting any occasion. Follow them on Instagram at Bespoke Maestro. Nutrient AG Solutions. Ensuring grower profitability by offering unparalleled access to innovation solutions. Recommended by your local experts. San Diego Wine Tasting App. Easy to use, free to download, fun to find a new winery in San Diego. Download the app today. Make sure you search for San Diego Wine Tasting App on the Apple Store and Play Store. Great. So let's go with the first one, uh, the background. Talk to us a little bit about your background. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Nelson. It's a great opportunity to chat with you. I actually kind of started in agriculture. Uh, I was born and raised in Fresno, California, so you can imagine we're right in the middle of uh, agriculture. Uh -huh. But my family wasn't really um, in agriculture except for my grandfather and my uncle. And uh, they're the ones I think uh, got me interested in it just because they were in the produce industry and my grandfather and I would uh, travel to the fields. We would actually look at the, uh, the melon crops growing out on the west side of the San Joaquin Valley. And so I'd go on like little field trips with them. And then we'd go to the packing sheds and meet the, the, uh, the packers, the, the owners, and you know follow the fruit right from the field into the packing shed. And then his job was to line it up and send it off to the mostly the Eastern marketplace. So um, I think that's where I got my love of agriculture but I didn't really quite get into that aspect of it, but it really made me appreciate that for my mom and dad were not in agriculture, but at least uh, I had that connection growing up. And then um, I actually uh, went to Cal Poly San Luis Obispo and got my degree in horticulture. And then from there, I uh, moved up to uh, Sonoma County and started my actual uh, career in in agriculture working mainly with wine grapes so that so it goes way way back <laughs> wow wow and then um so you you felt you fell in love because you had your grandfather and your uncle that i assume you look up to when you were young and then you started going around with them and checking out different things but what really made you get involved with fruits like what was it that that kind of got you excited well, I think it was just the fact that uh, these folks were, were, were growing a crop and providing these wonderful, um, these wonderful melons for the marketplace and uh, really got appreciation for what it took. I think what else really helped was um, another thing that cemented it, and it was really uh, quite... Um, powerful actually when i was oh probably i don't know 10 11 years old a good friend of ours had a, a great vineyard and but they grew thompson seedless for raisins and they're a lot and bigger actually, those grapes are oh lot, yeah they're they're big. Big. They're huge but okay. i actually helped with harvest okay and i really absolutely respected the role of the the farm labor and just how important they are for the whole process mm -hmm. and to just see the work that those folks put in 
And I mean, it was, it was tough. It was tough work out in the hot, dusty San Joaquin Valley. Um, I doing bet. that. But I got to tell you, it really made me appreciate the role of farm labor and, and what it takes to harvest these fruits and vegetables. Mm-hmm. So that, I think those, all those things just started really playing on me. Like I want to be involved in agriculture. This is just, yeah. this is big. This is yeah. really, really powerful. And, and we have such a great opportunity to have a, a, a strong role. Yeah, yeah. And I'm glad you're able to find it at a young age because a lot of people kind of bounce around from careers to careers and some of them end up staying in the same career that they really don't like, right? You're at least found something that you really enjoy and you keep on growing from it. So, and I'll tell, I'll tell a little story about us, how we kind of met. Um, one more thing, when, when you said, um, uh, what was the degree that you got in horticulture? Horticulture. Horticulture. Degree in horticulture. From what Cal is Cal that Cal. specifically? Because well, I know a lot of people enough, don't know. Yeah. Okay. So, all right, folks. Really, um, I, I was in the School of Agriculture, uh, but the horticulture at, at the time, they've, they've since changed a little bit, was mostly nursery and greenhouse and, and some of the more ornamental applications. Mm-hmm. Um, so I kind of deviated, but still stayed within the realm of agriculture. So um, I was looking potentially to, to work in more of a greenhouse type setting, uh, managing greenhouses, but uh, I ended up doing more field and work that and, you know, just so happened to be where the jobs were. And when we went up to Sonoma County, um, of course, you go with whatever the primary crops are and up there at the time were mostly wine grapes i had some apples uh some prunes a a few you know veggie crops um but it was mostly wine grapes so the nice thing about uh uh, staying and being a specialist is to you know you could focus a lot of your energy and uh, and really become a specialist okay perfect so that was actually another question that how you got involved in your field and you just explained it perfectly. Um, and I know a lot of people don't know that, you know, agriculture is just so, so broad and farming is so broad, right? But you're doing so much more than that. Um, well, I guess I'll, I'll guess I'll go into, we met you or Mike met you, which is my father-in-law. And just to let you know, he calls you, David, the mother Drucker, <laughs> farmer. That's what he calls you. And I always start laughing. I'm like, who is this Mr. Drucker? Um, <laughs> and I'm like, why do you call him that? He's like, oh, he just knows everything. He's like, you know, he just knows everything. I just call him the mother Drucker. So I just start laughing. And just to let everybody know, your last name is Drucker. So I thought that was pretty funny to say. Um, how do you guys get connected with Mike? What, what um, was it through Ramona? Yeah, I was, I, I, um, that's where I think, um, where the connection came. So, um, basically I have made a point of when I, um, when I work in an industry, I go in with, with both feet and, uh, and I like to be totally engaged. I like to be engaged not only with my work, but I like to be engaged with my community. I like to be engaged, um, with the industry and the industry associations. So I believe it's just my my industry associations with the the wine grape growing associations throughout San Diego County. Um, They frequently ask me to give updates on what's going on. So you got involved with the, you like to get involved with the community. You're in San Marcos? Or what area are you at? Uh, yes. Okay. So uh, just a little background in case folks are not familiar with Nutrient Ag Solutions, uh, we can you know put it um, kind of fast forward. So Nutrient Ag Solutions is a agricultural uh, chemical fertilizer seed input company. Uh, because we're the largest in the country, we have amazing resources. And uh, as a result of that, uh, we have locations all over, well, really all over the world. Um, uh, I think like 900 locations in the United States. So, 
Sam Marcos, um, Temecula, Fallbrook, San Jacinto, and Anaheim make up our uh, Southern California location. So we have a very uh, good footprint for distribution of our products and our services throughout Southern California. And as you can imagine, um, we're very strong as you go up the coast mm -hmm. throughout the major agricultural. A lot of farming, yes. A, a, lot, a lot, lot, lot of farming. So, so what's, you'll find what's, what's everywhere. your location? Where you start from, end at? What, um, do you go up to Temecula? Or? Yeah, so I, I pretty much um, am in San Diego County, and I do go to Temecula as well. Um, I also have some... Um, some clients in Orange County. So I kind of dip into Orange County, mostly San Diego, and then Riverside in the Temecula area. And then we have other, um, other folks that, uh, that cover further into like the Coachella Valley and, okay. and uh, obviously going towards uh, Yuma. Okay. And then be as specific as you can. If somebody calls you, which obviously I've been referring a couple of people in our area, um, specifically for vineyards, what do you do exactly for them? And, I, and then I'll give you a little bit of how I see what you do from, for us. So go ahead and give right. us your, your, okay. kind of your term or your title in there. Right. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for asking because um, I am a licensed pest control advisor and a certified crop advisor. And what that means is the state of California, uh, California Environmental Protection Agency, administers tests to individuals that can have a ag science degree and can pass these state mandated tests for proficiency in the areas that we work in. So as a licensed pest control advisor, there's only a certain amount of us in the state that can legally give agricultural advice. So it's really important to make sure you line up with people that are PCAs because it protects you, it protects the environment, and it protects, um, you know, everything, you know, all of your, all of your investment. The fruit, yeah, the fruit. What, what so, about how yeah. long does this, this test, how long is the test? Is it something so the, you need to get? So you need to have a minimum of an ag science degree as well as some experience. And then it's uh, the state mandated test is a series of uh, uh, tests. I think there's seven categories. So <clears throat> once and depending on what you're doing in agriculture will pretty much determine which categories you need to use. So by having that, that gives me um, the ability to write written recommendations. So to get back to your question, when you call somebody like me, you get that backing up. Um, as well as that certified crop advisor is a separate um, uh, test that allows me to give fertility recommendations and totally understand what it takes to grow the crop, not only try to manage insects, diseases, and uh, weeds, which the other license covers. Mm -hmm. So it really is a, a very well-balanced kind of a, a, a program and it has oversight. So it's really good that there's, even though a lot of us don't like government intervention, and I, I get it, but I also understand it's very important to make sure we protect our crop, our environment, and those around us, and have licensed professionals providing that, uh, those recommendations and, uh, and, and that, uh, that kind of feedback. So, yeah. so when you call somebody like myself, um, we provide services as well as products. So I could provide, uh, you know, soil and tissue analysis. We could do water analysis to check for irrigation suitability. A lot of people want to know if their if their well is going to be, you know, good enough for uh, irrigating agricultural crops. Um, we also uh, can take uh, samples into the laboratory and test for nutrients, and that's what we've done with you. And then after we get that, we put uh, basically a prescription together and create a fertility program that's going to match the um, uh, the soils and the tissues that your plant has. And we want to maximize your um, uh, 
uh, your your yield potential and and just what you're looking looking to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So for us, and just to give the listeners a little bit of background, usually, uh, if if you own a vineyard, so let's just say, oh, not just a vineyard. Let's just say most people have roses or they try to do a garden and, you know, you grow it, you start growing the the vegetable or the fruit. And then all of a sudden there's a leaf that's yellow. There's a couple of dots on the leaf. There's something eating the leaf and the fruit. And for us, we go to you, we take a picture and we just say, Hey David, what do you think? And I'm just kind of giving the viewers a little insight of hopefully they can visualize this, that I'll, t- I'll go through a vineyard and something turns orange for some reason, or there's something eating the, the leaves. And if I don't know, I for sure will contact you and you give us the input. You say, well, I, you know, I'm 90% sure it's this. Um, and also the other part that I like to put is there is a website that you told us to go to. And I would like to make sure the, the listeners hear this website. Do you happen to know it by the top of your head? The, the yes. UC? So it is a great, uh, it's, it's a great reference. <clears throat> it's the uh, University of California Integrated Pest Management website. So it's UCIPM. And <clears throat> when you click on that, uh, it's, a, it's, uh, it's a very, very, big and involved uh, website. So you want to click on agriculture because there's also a section uh, for homeowners. Click on agriculture, then click on your crop that you're growing. So then you click on wine grapes and there you will find a wealth of information. Um, I've been a huge um, proponent of the UC IPM website and the farm advisors and all of the researchers throughout the uh, University of California system that have provided input uh, to this website because it's it's tremendous. Um, yeah, yeah, you'll I find mean, a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, it, it's ex- like you're saying. It's um, well, I I, I want to make sure the listeners don't get confused from just going to a website, seeing the picture of you know certain bug, and thinking that's all it's going to be, and you're just going to find the the solution. You know, they have to go through you to make sure they, they do the right thing, right? Because you could spray the wrong product and you could, you know, remove the bug, but also you could remove the fruit as well within not knowing what to do. So uh, there's a fine yeah. line of getting so much information from the internet and, and, and doing the surgery afterwards, right? Like a doctor, oh yeah, I can fix a, a broken arm but are you going to fix it correctly if you're not a doctor, right? If you see YouTube videos and all that. So I think we got to be careful that the listeners, they just don't think that's, uh, it's just another option. They can see it. Then you get advice by yourself and then they can do the, the procedures that you recommend, which is what we do. That's why I'm bringing that up. You will always tell me, Hey, I think it's this, go check the website. I check the website. I say, Hey, it's looking like either a or B. And then you say, if it's A or B, we can go this route. And then we can use this certain product that you think it's going to work. And then we go that route. So I like the listeners understand that because obviously this is specifically for taking care of your vineyard for us, not for uh, like different types of fruit, just the vineyard for us. So, um, but yes, that website's really nice to, to use. How about if somebody comes to you and says, I want to do a vineyard? Cause that's the biggest question, you know, should I do, I did a podcast before this one called, should I plant a vineyard? And I actually had a lot of listeners. So overall, just to let you know, we, we've been getting a little over 200 plus listeners every week listening to the podcast, which is really cool. You know, it's, it's getting a little trend and drive going. Um, so for you, you're on the opposite. You don't have a vineyard, correct? That's correct. Okay. Yeah, so David doesn't have a vineyard, but when somebody comes to you, Hey, I just purchased a vineyard or, um, I need some help with the vineyard. What, what are the procedures? What are the steps that you, you tell your customers? Good, good question, Nelson. I got to tell you, um, I get, I guess I'll tell you the best thing to do. If you're looking at a piece of ground that doesn't have a vineyard, you want to put a vineyard in. That's a good one. We really need to test the soil. 
We have to test the soil because we need to know what is in it. The other important thing is once we get those results, then we need to ask um, the question is, what do we want to do prior to planting? Now, my experience has been it's, you want to get the results and then you want to amend the soil so you have optimum levels of nutrients so when you do put in your plants, they will grow and they will, they will flourish. So I really, really, I'm a, I'm a huge believer of, uh, of amending the soil appropriately. Um, I can't tell you how many times people just thought it'd be so great to plant vines and they got the hardware, they got the plants and they stuck them in the ground and they couldn't understand why the plants weren't growing that well because they never amended the soil. They never did anything. They just thought, you know, grapevines will grow anywhere. Yeah. So um, I, I really feel that a little bit of planting ahead of time and if you could amend the soil with some of those nutrients before you plant, uh, they have such a great, they have, uh, the, 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 uh, the vines will, will definitely do better. Will flourish, yeah, I can see. Well, for us, for personal experience, um, and like I said, I think this is the reason why a lot of people have been listening to this podcast is because I'm, I'm living it right now. You know, I'm physically doing what we're saying. So we actually have one little part of the vineyard I would say a hundred vines and that specific part, the vines aren't doing so good, but we didn't take, I think that little section was where the trucks used to turn around when it was empty and dirt. So everything was getting compacted in that little section. They're throwing a lot of things down. So I, I think the nutrients were getting out from the ground somehow. And it's just one little section. But I completely agree with you. If you don't take care of the soil um, and check out and do the testing, uh, you're, already, you're already doing two steps backwards. You know, you think it's going to grow because everybody says vines grow easy, which they do grow, but the challenge is, or the, what you want is fruit if you're doing a vineyard. <laughs> you can grow whatever you want. Yeah. You can have leaves anytime you want, but we don't sell leaves, right? We don't create wine out of leaves, so... Um, what about any trends? Is there any trends you've been seeing going on, going around, um, like drones, any drones fl flying around, Spain? Well, <laughs> any fun trends like that? Actually, I, um, I have not seen any drone spraying, but speaking of trends, um, we're actually working on this. Um, as you can imagine, as technology becomes more part of all of our everyday lives in so many different ways. It's finally really, really getting at, uh, applied in agriculture. And I'll give you a couple of examples. And this is what's so exciting about being um, associated with the large companies such as ours is we've made uh, huge investments um, across the US and, and uh, uh, down in Australia and South America to really get our technology footprint seen and utilized. And some of that is using drone technology, uh, using satellite imagery, and being able to uh, utilize um, data management tools to do predictive things to our fields and be very um, efficient. And uh, just I, there's just some really, really neat things that are coming out. So for us in our industry, what I'm hoping to do is I've proposed this to our uh, folks that um, I'd like that opportunity to introduce the technology to uh, the growers in San Diego County. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to work with the San Diego County Farm Bureau and this is my uh, chance to uh, plug the Farm Bureau, please. Mm -hmm. If you're not a member of the San Diego County Farm Bureau, you really should be, they're an unbelievably effective organization you're not going to find a better grassroots organization that fights for your um, for your rights as a farmer as a grower and um, they uh, have tremendous resources so as a result of being if you're also that gets you a member you know you have to join the irrigated lands group that's another requirement if you're if you're a, a a commercial grower. So uh, please reach out to San Diego County Farm Bureau 
join, I think you're going to find you're going to get uh, uh, tremendous benefits. But what um, I've been asked to do is uh, perhaps put together a little technology showcase. We were going to do this in the form of a meeting, but as you know, here we are. Yeah. Here's yeah, our the, meeting. The you Zoom meeting. Yeah. The, yeah. The Zoom so, uh, um, so in the absence of putting together a really nice uh, live meeting, in-person meeting, we'll go ahead and do something um, I'm hoping in the fall. So just kind of stay tuned for uh, local news, thing, things that you might hear about. Um, and I think you'll see some of the trends and some of the applications that we might be able to use. Okay. Um, I know it's a challenge. Um, a lot of growers, maybe a lot of people that are listening to this podcast are not particularly large. And it's like, how can I afford to invest in some of this technology if I've only got one or two acres, but there might be things that you can apply. Oh, perfect. Yeah, that's a, yeah, it's, that, I, I like that you put that in there because a lot of the Ramona area where we're at, I mean, I think the max will be five acres to six acres, you know, and then you're going as little as, as vines itself, a hundred, 200 vines, you know? <laughs> So it's it's a big influx for us, and when you go up north or Temecula, you're talking about a lot of acreage, you know. So, but yeah, if there's things like that that um, uh, we can help support and, and learn from, and then obviously that benefits not only ourselves but the the fruit growing. I think you know in the long run, it's going to take some time to get things going because I know farmers, you know, a lot of farmers are stu stubborn, <laughs> and they like their ways. That's their only way. But if they can see less money going out and more money coming in and less time in the, in the vineyard for us, uh, I think the better it will be for everybody. So, okay. So that'll be nice to see. So that's coming out in later this year, I assume. Perhaps um, it's a work in progress. So okay. I've just, uh, I've just given you the uh, sneak peek. Uh, little sneak peek and I'm just teasing you folks. So stay tuned as All they right. say. Perfect. Um, what would you say is one of the uh, a typical challenge that you see in vineyards besides the soil um, that you've been seeing in a lot of vineyards within the area? Well, yeah, I, I definitely want to get back to the soil because I think that's where it all starts. But okay. the biggest challenge I would say from a pest standpoint would be powdery mildew. Oh, yeah. It by far is the most prevalent disease that we have to deal with. And I am really, really passionate about telling folks to really stay on your spray schedules. You cannot, you know, make the statement, well, we're in a dry area and we don't get mildew. It's not, it's not if you get mildew, it's when you get it. Yeah. And so that's the one disease that I'd say we really have to stay on a calendar basis. So if the label of whatever product you're using says spray at 14 to 18 day intervals or 21 day yeah. intervals, then you better, you better stay with it because it, um, uh, those, those label intervals were developed by the manufacturer. So you need to stick with it. And I know things come up and sprayers break, it gets real hot, you don't want to spray. What you know, there's just all kinds of uh, my mom I've heard vacation. We went on vacation, yep. so we just left the vines alone and they came back and uh and there was mildew all over the fruit. And I'm not a winemaker, but I know that you cannot make wine with fruit that has been infested with mildew. It yeah. absolutely ruins the, uh, the the fruit and so you can't salvage it you can't clean it up so the yep. best uh, uh, best defense is a good offense yep. so it's really be just stay on those schedules and use the products and that's why I utilize folks like myself is to tell you what products might be um, best for your particular operation and yep. uh, and we absolutely love to sell those products to you and provide those to you um, as long as you have your license your operator identification number uh, we are more than happy to supply those things and uh, and we can work out programs that are uh, applicable 
for you and 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 what your goals are you know we have some folks that um really want to go more on, in the organic arena we can do that uh you want to go uh lower inputs or just you know, there's just uh, there's a whole myriad of products that we can um, we can block for uh, a mildew program. Mm -hmm. That's perfect, and that's good little shout out to Nutrient AG, right? Or Agriculture? How, what's the name specific name of the company and the website? Uh, we're actually called New, um, right, right. We're actually called Nutrient Ag Solutions. So, so Nutrient, yeah, Nutrient. Yeah, N-U-T-R-I-E-N, Nutrient Ag Solutions. Okay. Yeah, so that is our company. Our, we're, um, we're basically the, I guess, the one of the arms because the company is involved in uh, many different aspects, even like uh, uh, mining of uh, phosphorus and potassium. So that's uh, one division, and then we're the... Uh, basically the retail division that works directly with growers okay. and uh, provides the uh, the products and services nice all right we just finished off a of part one vineyard management we had some great information from david make sure you tune in next week to part two where we discuss um, how to prevent some of the issues that we find in the vineyard and also some successful stories that he had from a vineyard using his services Make sure you tune in next week. Also, I appreciate all the sponsors, Castelli Family Vineyards, Bespoken, Maestro, San Diego Wine Tasting App, and Nutrient AGI Solutions. Check those out too and follow them on Facebook and Instagram. I'm your host, Nelson Pizarro. This is Life in a Wine Bottle, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.